Hello, I'm Farhad Bilamoria, and welcome to my talk on electricity reliability differentiation via insurance under deep decarbonisation. This work has been produced together with my colleagues at the University of Oxford in the Energy and Power Group. Now, the motivation for this talk is really on how we ensure reliability in a future decarbonized electricity market. Now, the nature of risk in the electricity system is changing. In order to decarbonize our electricity, electricity system in a rapid manner, we need to introduce order of magnitude increases in wind and solar PV capacity. Now, as we know, this introduces variability and uncertainty into the electricity supply mix, which needs to be balanced by firm dispatchable resources. Now, in a market context, the economic incentives for firming resources are challenged by zero marginal cost variable generation. And the question from an investment perspective really is whether the profits and cash flows from those investments in dispatchable generation are sufficient to, um, to provide a return on investment. This is also subject to the reliability externality that's associated with the introduction of administrative caps and operator intervention, which results in the well-known missing money problem. Now, on the other hand, we have demand heterogeneity introduced by technology. We have the potential for self-supply through advanced distributed generation and storage. We have resilient grid forming DER. A recent example is the Ford 150 Lightning, which can actually provide electricity to the house or to the consumer during times of electricity interruption. And so what we're seeing is a move away from this homogeneous, homogeneous notion of demand to one where there's really a spectrum of different types uh, and valuations of demand all the way from more essential uses of demand, such as heating, cooking, and where electricity is a gate to things like water and gas to, to potentially more flexible and deferrable demand. Now, the key challenge is how should market design adapt? And more specifically, how should resource adequacy mechanisms adapt to this changing dynamic? Now, traditional resource adequacy mechanisms span a spectrum from the well-known energy-only market design to a range of administrative mechanisms such as capacity auctions, operating reserve demand curves, and reliability auctions. And in a modern context, some of the key challenges associated with these resource adequacy mechanisms is re relates to how we credit some of the new technologies that are being observed, such as how we credit variable renewables and storage relating to their, uh, their benefit to capacity, and how do we integrate demand response and flexible load. And that's an ongoing challenge with respect to resource adequacy mechanisms. And so in this work, what we would like to propose is a fresh perspective on, on resource adequacy and to move beyond the idea of traditional resource ad adequacy mechanisms. To do this, we introduce the concept of reliability differentiation via insurance mechanisms. Now the insurance business model in many ways is well catered to the electricity system risks that we expect in the future. It is a business model specifically tailored to managing portfolios of tail risks. And the premium pricing model allows consumers to specify and hedge interruption risk. The risk provisioning framework in insurance is also suited to assessing correlated common mode and extreme outcomes. Now the conceptual underpinnings of the reliability insurance model were set out in work by Hung Po Chow and Robert Wilson, as well as Oren and Doucet in, in the early 90s. And so the question that we would really like to ask from a research perspective is, can insurance-based reliability differentiation enhance outcomes from a 
reliability and unserved energy perspective. What's the impact of that type of design on market outcomes and system outcomes? And so to describe the design, we begin with the traditional energy only market based on the idea of merit order dispatch cleared by marginal prices. Now this type of market can incorporate uh, additional administrative mechanisms such as administrative price caps. It's also subject to the well-known reliability externality. And there's also the potential for strategic behavior by generators. Now, what we would like to introduce is two additional components to this market design. And the first is a priority curtailment scheme. Consumers via insurance contracts with the central authority would specify their demand preferences. And those demand preferences would form the basis of a priority curtailment scheme. The value ascribed by consumers to different types of demand would then be actualized in priority curtailment. In a situation of scarcity, the operator would then curtail demand in that order. The second component that we'd like to introduce is the potential for incremental generator contracting and resource contracting based on insurance portfolio optimization. So the idea really is that this central authority with exposure to customer interruptions in the form of value of loss load by insurance contracts would then also be able to assess the system mix and make incremental generator decisions and contracting decisions to support investment in new generation based on whether that improves the insurance portfolio. Now to describe some of these contracts in more detail, on one side you have insurance contracts between a reliability insurer and consumers. So consumers would pay an insurance premium based on the value that they ascribe to different types of demand. And the insurer in the event of interruption to that demand would pay compensation based on the value specified in insurance contracts. Now that insurance contract, as mentioned before, would be linked to the priority curtailment scheme so that consumers are actually curtailed in order of the value and priority of demand. Now on the other side of the coin, we have availability contracts between the reliability insurer and reliability resources such as generation and storage. These contracts would be based on availability and would specify high penalties for unavailability. They may also include resiliency requirements in the contract, such as related to fuel supply and uh, weatherization resilience. Now these contracts based on the payments in those contracts would, be, uh, would go to fund the missing money, which is a well-known challenge in electricity market design. Now, what are the criteria that an insurer uh, takes into account in making its decisions? And we observe, that we investigate this through looking at the profit and the cash flows of the investor, of, of the insurer. An insurer's primary sources of income are investment income and premium income, minus any availability payments paid to generators or resources, minus debt service and minus any compensation payments made in the event of demand interruption. Now, the insurer is seeking to maximize utility, which we define as a mean risk measure, where we use the conditional value of risk, risk measure, uh, which is a popular measure used both for electricity market applications, as well as for insurance applications. Another important component of the insurance business model is insurance risk provisioning. This means that the insurer needs to set aside a particular amount of capital, which are known as technical reserves, to cover worst case losses. And so these technical reserves are held in cash or equivalently secure and liquid investments and are sized based on a worst case loss outcome. As an example, 
International regulatory frameworks for insurance specify a 99.5% confidence interval for those losses. Now, we incorporate this into a multi-agent equilibrium model, uh, which incorporates both strategic generation expansion, as well as decisions made by the reliability insurer. It is a scenario-based stochastic model where generator profits are based on spot market revenues and availability contracts. And generators maximize a risk measure based on profits and CBAR. Now they're subject to financing constraints, technical constraints, and operational constraints relating to the resource in question. And so this model basically seeks out an equilibrium between the electricity generators or resources and the reliability insurer. We apply this to a case study based on the South Australian electricity system. And the reason we select South Australia is because of the degree of variability and renewable penetration observed and, and currently deployed in South Australia. As you can observe um, from the net load graph, there are, there's a significant variation in net load across scenarios. Now, we assume two categories of demand in this study, a disaggregation between essential demand, so such demands um, basically uh, that, that goes to, to essential uses, such as heating and cooking, as well as where it's a gateway to other essential infrastructures, such as water and gas. And we also have a, a segregation for non-essential demand, which is basically the rest. Now, we consider this in, in two cases for an energy-only market design, and a differentiated reliability market design. And we also compare that to a central optimization outcome. Now, the results are interesting for a variety of reasons. First, we observe that the differentiated reliability market results in incremental investment relative to the energy only market design. That investment is driven by ensure the incentives of the insurer to mitigate and reduce risk. And so that's what drives the additional contracting by insurers. And that's what drives additional capacity investment in the system. As a result, we observe a reduction in unserved energy, both on a scenario weighted basis, as well as a P95 scenario outcome. Moreover, both on an average and P95 basis, we observed that the value of unserved energy in the, mark, in the differentiated reliability market design is closer to the centrally optimized model relative to the energy only market. And so what the differentiated reliability uh, market design allows for is a system mix and an outcome that's closer to a centrally optimized model. Now, this gives an example in a particular representative day and scenario of how curtailment would work in, the, in, in both the energy only market design and the priority insurance market design. On the left-hand side, you observe a case of curtailment in a, uh, under a standard rotating outage basis where curtailment is essentially randomized and so you observe curtailment of both essential and non-essential demand. Now in the reliability, differentiated reliability market design case, we observe a couple of interesting outcomes. First is just the scale of reduction of unserved energy as a result of that additional capacity investment. And then importantly, we also observe a prioritization of load in order of essentiality as described by the compensation values in the insurance contracts. And so, what we observe under scarcity is that the uh, priority curtailment scheme tends to curtail non-essential demand in or in order uh, in in preference to essential demand, leaving essential services to continue doing scarcity under this model outcome. Now, across the range of scenarios, we also observe very similar trends in that we observe a both a reduction of uh, of unserved energy, as well as a prioritization in the curtailment of demand 
to more towards essential demand relative to essential demand. And so what would we like to take away from this study? Well, what, one of the conclusions is that the differentiated reliability design offers the potential for reliability enhancement. It also allows for whole of system risk assessment of reliability, and it enables load prioritization and differentiated reliability, which links into the heterogeneity of demand enabled by advancing technology. Now, some of the challenges of this model are the implementation and the complexity, particularly around the complexity associated with engaging with, uh, with retail consumers. What are the incentives for the spot market and for existing generators in the supply mix? And how do we manage equity issues associated with vulnerable consumers? And so we really need ongoing research in the application of differentiated reliability and insurance designs in a liberalized market. And so that concludes um, my talk. Thank you for your time. And if there are any, any questions, please don't hesitate to, to email me. Thank you.